Sadducees there we go. And I'm okay with that. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 603. Uh, present are committee members Wayne Franson, Dave Peterson, Mark Sobine, uh, council member Hilliard. Hilliard. I want to say Hillman. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. Hey, I'll and, take whatever you give me. Public Works uh, staff member Corbett Stevens. And uh, in the audience, I do not know you. I'm Mike Pelfrey. Mike Pelfrey. Well, I'm welcome. trying to be a resident here. Oh, welcome. good. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and uh, make a motion or entertain a motion. I don't know if we can actually do that without having a quorum. So maybe we'll just pass on that. I was going to say to approve the February minutes. But we don't have enough to do this. Six. Huh? What do you need six? Need uh, three. I think we've got it. I think we have a quorum. We have a quorum. Well, yeah. three of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes. I'll second it. You can't. Well, you can't. Uh, Wayne right. asked it. I'm not on it. Oh, sweet. That's why I'm, I'm game for not being on any more committees. That's why I'm second it. Okay. So. Motion by Dave. Second by Wayne. Boy, it seems like that happens a lot. <laughs> Almost like the one we want to move forward. Okay. Now, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, if there's any public comment, uh, we'll be open for that. If you want to introduce yourself again or anything, we're now staying. Instead okay. of just trying to have some property up here, my wife and I were trying to, to see if we can afford to build up here. And Kind of do one of those things, so we're just kind of oh, sure. it down. Yeah. He told me to come by and check place, check it out. Where you know, make a roving circle. You own two of them, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's so. going to be one. We've yeah. already, yeah, we've been we're merging them together. So, so. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So we're Not only there. affording to live up here, but affording to be able to stay living up here is a yeah. yeah. challenge too. So, all right. Uh, no public comment. Uh, we'll move on to, oh, uh, kind of the the gist of the thing. The uh, Corbett and Dave uh, Pratt, it, it kind of got to me and talk, wanted to talk about where we're at on the solid waste uh, recycle collection and bringing that into into the house. Uh, ben, you had agreed to give us an overview of where we're standing at this point? Yes. Um, so I kind of thought, you know what, Wayne sent, you know, that whole long list of I questions. I actually have a copy of them here, too. Well, I'm going to make it even easier on us here, and I'll just share this. Okay. Except, if I can. So let's see here. I should be able to share this. Desktop one. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay. It's not wanting me to do that. Well, I am not sure why it's not letting me share. Okay, it doesn't like that. So I'm just gonna read them. It won't let me share, so. So Wayne, question number one, where does the city get a garbage truck? So Corbett has, uh, and Corbett just cut me off if I ever say anything that's not true here, um, or if you wanna add, because um, Corbett's really done a lot of the work here. Um, I've kind of just slightly assisted um, in comparison. Though we have done quite a bit of work um, on the garbage and the feasibility there. So where do we get a garbage truck? Um, on the website, there's a few different government websites. And one of them, um, Iron Planet, uh, offers government surplus vehicles. Is that a true statement for me? Yep. So they're second hand. Um, we have seen some come up that we just kind of... Corbett and I consoled each other after they sold for ridiculously low prices. With Consol low console each other. Yeah. Right? What did I say? Oh, I thought you said consult. Oh, we didn't. We consoled. No. Yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> we consulted each other too, but more Corbett does the consulting. Um, but we had one that went from. It was a. It was a show truck. It had what fifteen thousand miles. Yeah. It was. It had lived its life in Arizona. Um, it lived in. It currently was in uh, Colorado. Um, it was natural gas, and it sold for 15 grand. Um, I looked on there tonight, on uh, today, and it looks like things are going a little bit closer to, you know, around 30. 
um, in speaking with the waste management salesman, he was uh, talking about, um, you know, he's thinking that right now they're trying to get them for like half a million dollars. Now, those are new trucks, which we're not really looking to go new. But there hey, are right, many... Quick, quick question. I, yeah. I know there's a lot of information to go through here. Yeah. Uh, quick question is, you know, when you talk about natural gas, what would we have to fill that up by the Spanish Fort Public Works? Is that about the closest facility for natural gas? Uh, anywhere between here and the transfer station. Yeah, okay. That's the only one I can think of is the one down by there's a yeah. there's a Sierra's office and there's a gas yeah, station yeah. there. That's the only one I can think of. I mean, we've, we've looked at, there's, there's government money that would install that would let us install a compressor, a compressor okay. and storage tanks here. Um, but if, if that were to happen, it would be at no cost to the city. But we would have to participate in in uh, allowing other people to use it, allowing allowing private citizens to use it. It's managed through the state. It's a card reader kind of system. Mm -hmm. It's unmanned, and so you know it's yeah. There's some risk there. Risk, a little bit of risk, but it's pretty much a moot point. Yeah. yeah, and like Corvus said, the station's right next to the transfer station, which is where the truck will head once a week anyway, or twice a week. Yeah. Um, so that's where the truck would come from. How much would be that cost? Anywhere between 15, probably to, if we go high, 40, 45,000. Um, does that sound about right yeah. to you? Yeah. Um, there's some many different financial options. Corbett and I have thrown around a lot of different options there, um, thoughts around the financing, but but that's not necessarily our largest hurdle. One one of the things about that is is there's to me there's not a huge concern about use about buying a used piece of equipment, only because Provo City is committed to us that they would help us get into the garbage business um, if we want to take if we want to take them up on it. Now, that means from their commitment to us was that if we had a truck that broke down, they would loan us a truck so that we could finish what we needed to do. And that's a commitment to Corbett, and I've also gotten a commitment to. Right. So the mayor down there is just, she's like, I'll bend over backwards to help you guys out in any way I can. One thing that I learned, and I'm sure we all know that, so I'm stating the obvious, if it isn't, if it isn't written down, it didn't it doesn't happen. exist. Correct. Right. And so if we go down that path, and I've talked to the mayor, um, Mayor Kafusi. Kafusi, and she says, you don't even use my people, just call me directly and we'll make it happen. I'll get all the contracts and everything in place. Yeah, they were, they, they, they committed that they would even write up the contract. Let us approve it before, so that they would write up the contract. And Is there anything they missing? Like what's in it for them? They just want to help us. I mean, that's their, that was their commitment and their feeling to us. We, we went over there when we were, I mean, we went over there to their office and we spent a good, two or three, four hours mm -hmm. with their city attorney, with their city manager, with their public works director, with, I mean, there were five of, five of those guys? Five of their staff, and the lieutenant. So the lieutenant mayor, Mayor Kafusi herself, and the three attorneys. No, two attorneys and a, the city manager, the city planner. Just, just trying to help us navigate through the legal issues that we're fighting right now. Nice. At, at no cost. And they bought us lunch. Yeah, they bought us lunch. Their commitment to us was, you know, hey, if, if we can help you, we want to. Well, Mayor Kafusi said multiple times, she says, I've got millions and millions of dollars in a budget. I understand that you guys don't. Let us help you. Has, have, has the city council addressed, in other words, an employee or employees that would be necessary to... So it would be no, one. Yeah, we'd have to budget. We'd have to include that in, in the analysis. But no, I mean, we understand that if it happens, we're not going to do it with current staff. Right. Okay. And so whatever it takes to make that work, as long as it works out financially, then we work it out. Well, I like Just the idea. to be clear, the city council heard the idea, said we need to know more, pumped it this way. Okay. That's as far as the city council's right. gone. Okay. Okay, cool. thank you for clarifying that. I just, yeah. I was curious, sometimes, sometimes it feels like our recommendations aren't always heard by the city council. So I was wondering, you know, thank you for the extra effort on, on doing this and, and at least pushing it down here to... I'll take it one step further. I think they're always heard. <laughs> they're always heard, we just don't always have the money to do it. <laughs> fair, fair enough. You guys are big dreamers. <laughs> no, I actually like Corbett's idea of that oil, you know, recycled oil heater. 
And, and we did too. It was just the ten thousand dollars that we didn't, we couldn't find in the budget. I told the mayor that loaned me the money. How? I would find, I would finance it personally. How many homes do we have currently using utilizing the services of the waste management system currently? Four. It's every house. Yeah, it's four. It's like four. You know, if if I may. Um, Interrupt. We, a lot of these questions that you're asking right now, Wayne has already addressed, and that's what Ben's going through. So yeah, maybe I will be patient. If you have some questions, <laughs> just write but, out. But remember, any of these we don't get to. to feel free to write. Okay. okay. So number three, used truck. Um, I think is where we would start, and then let it self perpetuate and self fund itself. Um, what's the trade-offs between leasing a truck versus buying one, cost services, etc.? I think it all comes down to, you know, the finance committee deciding what is our best avenue. Um, Corbett and I have talked a little bit about, you know, we've got an extra two hundred thousand dollars in the road fund um, that we'll put in the road fund this year. Don't worry about that. Well, that is a potential possibility, right? That we could use from. But we haven't. That's all the finance committee that will then present that option. No, 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 no. I mean, if it, that's for West Lofer. Yeah. No, this is from the excess of 2001's budget. I understand that, and we we said that should go towards West Lofer. Fixing doing that road over there. If that's okay. if we're talking about the same money. That's left over. Just, just to be clear, for, for, for clarification, that's what's left over from the initial bond that was, we set aside money for, and the. Uh, uh, city funds that we contributed together that, that 580000 or whatever it was back in 2019. Is that where that money is, what you're referring to? No, there's two There's two chunks of money. The first chunk was a year and something ago, the council approved spending $200,000 right. for West Lofer. Right. Then at the end of this last fiscal year, there were funds remaining that we did not spend, um, <coughs> primarily on roads because we were doing all of the water project and a lot of the roads got covered by the water project. And so the council said that should go towards roads. That extra money that did not get spent should go towards roads. And specifically that? Well, I, if, uh, just to clarify on that, I th what we, I think we did was we used we had determined we were going to use the road funds to fix certain streets, uh, Broad Hollow and I think uh, West or Spring. That's the bond money. That, but there was also some budget money included in that, like two hundred thousand. There was there was a combination of the two because we couldn't get as much money as we wanted from the bond to cover it. So we rolled some some funds in left over, and I think those those two were combined together. And I think the money what I'm if I'm remembering right, the money that is now that two hundred thousand is what's left over from those two sources of money. When there's I, and I guess it really you're doesn't hearing matter. a story that I have not heard, so uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to discount what you're saying. I'm just saying that's not what I remember. Um, I remember the two hundred thousand plus that we did allocate towards West Lofer that's already been approved, right. and then the other piece of money was left over from this last year that we didn't spend, so we put that also towards roads. Those are the two pieces of money that I know. As far as I know, we're waiting on Ted to refresh the bids so we can find out how much is West Oak going to cost. That's what we're waiting for. Okay. Between that and Summit Creek. Summit Creek's for commitment to participate. That's right. Summit Creek's planning on doing it at the same time. Okay. okay. Now, now you guys are getting sidetracked. The bottom line is the 200 k in that account. Right. <coughs> There's just a little bit more. And, bit more. And, and, and I think what I'm trying to say is I'm not willing to spend that on garbage trucks. That's 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 like anyway, to me those are, I understand. Those are so, two yeah. sacred things or the road money is a sacred thing. We've got to spend the money on roads because our roads need it. There is a there's a situation also with that with that particular project where the city is out of compliance with its ordinances. We have the world's longest cul-de-sac. Well, I, I remember that. That was one of the discussions. And that's illegal. So we had with, we uh, want to, we want to, 
address that as best we can. Yeah, I remember a public works discussion meeting probably about two years ago where we talked about that is, you know, we, we are not uh, abiding by our own uh, code, so, you know, which right. makes about as much sense as tying yourself to a tree during a hurricane. David, which road are you talking about right now? If you just point for me right there. Where it's lower down at the bottom where it's dirt. Right before it ties into some creek drive. You mean a loaf of drive? Yeah, right there. To the north, 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 so well, it's our, basically our standard <laughs> says this is a cul-de-sac. Maximum length of a cul-de-sac is a thousand feet. Now you got that one. We're fifteen or seventeen hundred right now. So we're yes. longer than the Broad Hollow one, if we don't yeah. include Suicide Hill as a road. Well, Broad Hollow doesn't start until you go beyond settlement. Correct. So once you go beyond settlement, it's a dead end. Gotcha. So that that offshoot right there, just one inch from your right of your index finger there, is that an offshoot? Yes, that's that's a cold set. But okay. but the dead that's end starts set. with the Mills Drive. But this is gotcha. a dead end. Okay. So, so it, this whole the, thing yeah. is one big cold set. Perfect. That's what I needed to know. Thank from, you. From Woodland Hills Drive all the way down low for west is, is a cold set, even though there's two offshoots to the yeah. right. There's only there, one. Until they connect that street and everything. Those are three cold sacks connected to together, basically. Perfect. One entrance, one exit. That's the yeah, basic code. That's what I wanted to know because I wanted, you know, settlement being a through street now makes sense as to why Broad Hollow changes. Well, the dead right end there. on Broad Hollow starts at settlement. Gotcha. And that's, we, we mapped that out the other day, right, Corbett? It's like 1100, 1200? Yeah, something like that. Short okay. version is we have to do that, so, so don't climb the panel 200 by 1000 for that garbage truck. Well, no, I'm not. But, but even at that, if the garbage, if the garbage <coughs> through, through this review or the review done by this committee stands alone, self sufficient, then. You don't need that many anyways. Well, and that's what I'd love to see is it to be its own enterprise fund. I don't know if it legally has to be its own enterprise it fund, but I think My it, understanding is it does. Perfect. Then it would need to be in that way. It, it will, depending on the price of that garbage truck and cans, should pay for itself in one year. One year. Correct? Well, that's what you and I have decided. So, that's what right you, yeah. You see that, I, I guess the way I would like to talk about. Mm -hmm. is how much is the initial investment and then talk about how much, how long will it take to pay that off. But we right now have no budget, zero, for garbage truck, no budget for cans. True. So I'd like to talk about it in terms of what is our, what is our initial investment, how much are we going to have to outlay, which you've been outlaying some of that, so that's good. Correct. So that's what we we need to get that number first, and then get the number of how Correct. long is it going to take to pay so, that back? And this would be a 2024 <coughs> line item because we've got a year on the contract that we're signing. If I may, yes, in the interest of time here, uh -huh. um, this in, in in the email I sent out to everybody, this is more than likely going to be a budget committee and council decision. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, our part in this is to make sure that all the right questions get asked. Correct. And so I don't know if we are actually need to answer all these questions tonight, and we should, certainly should address them, but I don't know if we need to spend a lot of time discussing each other. But I would just like to make sure that the budget committee and the council get all the right yeah. questions. I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot that they have and a lot that we have, and I just want to make sure we don't overlook anything. So rather than sit here and try and answer all the questions tonight, I would like to focus on making sure we get the right questions answered. So the, the, other, the other one that I, I think has to be on there, and it goes back to our, we, we can't have these trucks sitting out. So how are we going to shelter them? Um, and I do believe that's one of the questions that's been asked on this list. Yeah. So, and that's, that's kind of, so, but uh, let, yeah, yeah, we can go through, again, go through this list of questions, maybe just spend a yep. minute or two on them. And then, uh, and then from there, any more questions we can add to it to send or to the committee. And just one more note on the, on the budget committee. I was under the impression, I don't know if I misunderstood or something, that they were aware of this and uh, getting ready to take action on it. Uh, 
Walked my dog the other day. I talked to Mike, and Mike no. has no idea. No, they're, they're not taking action yeah. on it. Yeah, I, I'm, aware, I'm, aware, I'm aware of that now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They might be aware only in conversation. Oh. Yeah. I know Chris has talked to Mike. Yeah. Mike had, when I talked to him the other day, Mike had no idea. Zero. At all? At all. It was a big surprise to him. I said, whoops. Okay. Fuck I'm, I was sure Chris had talked to somebody. Maybe it was new. I don't know. Anyway. Well, go ahead, Luke. Okay. Um, can one tra truck handle the garbage pickup or two trucks needed? One truck can handle it. Um, who will be driving the truck? Does the city hire a permanent drive? Uh, it's a one-day process. Um, I don't think we need to personally hire anybody else. Um, I'm currently working with um, the mayor to a degree on allocation of human resource. Um, and so we'll look at that um, in further detail later. I'm sorry, you said one-day process? I yes. thought you were talking about two days pickup. Well, one-day pickup is all the city would need. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought there was some comment about a two days. That's right. So, okay. Just two days a week. Do they have just two trucks of trash cans? Do they have a green waste or, a, or is it just a recycle out of trash? So the first truck, the truck would leave in the morning and uh -huh. pick up all the recycle. Okay. And then they'd go and drop that off at the transfer station. And by this time, we'll spend six months going to the current transfer station. And then after that, we'll be at the new transfer station, which, which is, is just closer. slightly closer. Okay. Um, but we drop off the recycle, come back, pick up all the garbage, head back. So I do all that in one day? Yes. Good. Yep. I will, add, I will ask one quick question. So what are you looking at on, on this? Are we looking at like a 1.5 full-time equivalent employee, or are we looking at 0.75? I mean, can we keep one guy busy only a full-time on this, or how much what an employee time will it take? Sounds like one guy, one day. Well, that's, one that's, just, one day. For, that's just for Two. garbage. That's just for garbage. So what I'm looking at is... That's just for picking it up and delivering it to the transfer station. We have two current employees right now that are part-time, um, and they work for Craig. Uh, and so I want to know if they've got any bandwidth currently. So we're doing a kind of an analyzation of their, okay. their workflows uh, to see if they've got any excess capacity in there. Um, and that's probably where I would start. If not, then we could look at potentially talking um, and seeing if any of our seat, because you'd need a CDL to drive the garbage truck, correct? Yes. So we'd need somebody with a CDL license to be able to, to take that on, which may be one of our plow drivers. Um, but we could look at all those different options. But, but when, it's just when we run the thing. model, when we run the model, run it both ways. Yep. Run, it, run it as though you've, you've got, you know, what, two thirds, two thirds of an, or a third of an employee, um, My understanding is whatever. We only had two or three CDL people on snow plows. Mm. You being one of them. I think there's only. Is Val? Val's a CDL. He's You're Val. a CDL. Val's on, so. so Val yeah, Val. correct. But you got to the Dewey. Chris, Dylan Dewey. Chris Jensen. <coughs> He was going to get a CD. I mean, he, they had talked about if, it. Is it not done? There's a difference between getting it and has it. There will be, there'll be a <laughs> class B required. You would need a class A. Correct. So that's a lot simpler to get than Correct. a class A. Now, they did just bump the, clarif the qualifications up just recently on what that will look like. Okay. But yes. that's yeah. it is a cost if we have to pay for that CDL license. But it's minimal. All right. Um, insurance premium increase, um, I think that depends on who is driving the truck, um, but something to look at. I think that should be not will it increase, it'll be a question of how much. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah, because it'll be by vehicle, right? But in the time involved, you got a driver that's going to pick up garbage, but then you also have that same person possibly. It's going to do maintenance on cans, going to deliver cans, pick up cans, you know, that kind of stuff. And that becomes part of the FTE I was asking about. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, does the driver work under Corbett's direction? Um, that would be my preference. Um, I think that would be yours as well. Yeah, I don't mind. Um, does Corbett have the time to devote to adding this assignment? He's got plenty of time. He's good. <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> you, you say no? I'm saying hard no. Hard no. Uh, I, I don't mind doing the management, but... I, I, he's I'm not, not driving the truck, that's for sure. If that's what you guys want me to do, I'll be glad to do it. But no. In place of? Oh, exactly. That's exactly. the most expensive way for us to pick up garbage in the city, is to have Corbin do it. 
Um, how much time of the week? Yeah, so that's a mute question. Um, where do we need the truck, or keep the truck, uh, when not being used? Do you want to talk to that? Okay, we got a meeting. Um, it was going to be tomorrow. Mayor's trying to work out a meeting right now with Larry Mylar. Larry Mylar is the guy that owns the Davis property. Um, Larry Mylar has expressed interest in acquiring the property that the salt shed sits on and the two wells, the two lower wells. Um, the two lower wells aren't any good. We use them as far as on paper to, to, to satisfy a source capacity requirement with DDW, but they're, they're not any good. They're more of a liability than they are a use, uh, you know, a benefit to the city. Anyways, Larry Mylar has expressed interest in the property the salt shed sits on to, to incorporate that into his development. In return, he'll rebuild the salt shed someplace else. And so that's what we're trying to meet with him to see if he's interested, to what extent, uh, put a dollar amount to it. If he does, then we will incorporate into that new salt shed an, an expansion that will add two bays or four bays or whatever for equipment. So we can get everything that we own inside instead of having it outside. So as far as the building, it may, it may be taken care of, but we will, I mean, we'll know really well Monday after that meeting, but until we do, you can add on to this building here. I mean, there's been discussion about that in the past too. I, I know this might be too early to ask this question for it, but any idea where it would Down by the church? Which one? Down by the church at the roundabout. So that's where the new salt shed would end up? Likely. That would be property that he has that he's, I mean, he's giving to us in no. exchange for... So Reed Nelson salt. owns the property. Uh, Craig's already talked to Reed Nelson. Reed Nelson owns the property. He will not sell it to... This is a Ted Hanks, Don Meekham. <laughs> Reed Nelson will not sell the property to Larry Mylar, but he'll trade, this, he'll trade the property to the city and then let the city sell it to kind of a thing. We wouldn't, but in, in essence, uh, Craig talked to Reed Nelson. Reed Nelson says, you know what? I don't want you guys using that dirt road anymore. And if you don't have a salt shed back there, you don't need to use the dirt road. So if you'll give me the dirt road, I'll give you equivalent. Right. And so we figure the dirt road is about two and a quarter acres. Um, if Reed Nelson is willing to give us, to trade us two and a quarter acres just east of the church, then we'd put it right there. So, so uh, below the church, below. The yeah, path. off the hill over the parking lot, directly east. I mean, yeah, you're talking. The church sits right here, right. We're talking, we're talking right here. So outside, out of the visible eyesight. Yeah, it'd be off the hill. Okay, because that, that would be a nice surface. For some reason, I was thinking south of the church is right up there. I was just thinking north of the church. And, 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 <laughs> and if, if that were the case, I mean, all of this is obviously fluid, but Larry Mylar that owns all of this property, the county wants him to access the roundabout. Well, the roundabout is landlocked because of Reed Nelson. So Larry Mylar owns this piece and all of this stuff in here, but he can't get to the roundabout. If we can work out a deal to get property here, from Reed Nelson and give up the road, then we can provide access to Larry Mylar, which in turn benefits Treehouse, which is Larry Mylar, and the participation on their part to build the road would not be a, city, a, a burden of the city. So, you know, actually it sounds good, but I have a couple questions. <laughs> but, right, what's the motivation for him trying to pick up that piece of property other than just he just wants to close off that road? Um, free, free. yeah. So, so my question well, I, is: I don't is, understand. He wants. What are the plans for that big bit of the property that he owns? For Reed Nelson? Uh huh. Nothing. Nothing. So no houses. In other words, if they get well, access to the roundabout, as soon as he dies, you know what happens. Right. So my question is: Are we are we about to uh, blow a lot of traffic into the roundabout? If oh, absolutely. If it happens. Okay. But the county is pushing. The county is telling. Um, Treehouse development, you're not going to access Woodland Hills Drive except at the roundabout. Now, I don't know how they do that, but they've told him. I mean, the county doesn't allow access onto a county road but every 1,500 feet unless it's already an established road. Remember the guy just north of the, the lighthouse on the side of the road? 
That guy, mm-hmm. when he built that barn and his corrals mm-hmm. right there, he built a road out, of, out on the Woodland Hills, out on the Woodland Hills Drive. They shut him down. The county shut him down because they have an ordinance that doesn't allow access, but every 1,500 feet. So that's why you get the corridor, you maintain the corridor without all the intersecting roads because the county is set up to do that. So the county's telling him, you can't access Woodland Hills <coughs> Drive, but every 1,500 feet, unless it's already an approved access. Okay, that makes so, sense. that's what you're saying. So anyways, it's, it's still totally fluid. There's nothing that's been approved. We're just trying to negotiate. If he did access the roundabout, he would have to, I mean, this is again, burden he would bear. If he accessed the roundabout, he'd have to, to do a uh, merge lane. So you'd, and, and that would facilitate moving the mailboxes. Now you take that mailbox property and you cut the top five or six feet off of it. What are you gonna do with the mailbox in the meantime? You're gonna move the mailbox building. Well, if you move the mail, mailbox building, you will also expand the mailbox building so every Christmas, you don't end up with 300 packages at the Pace and Post Office, or the same post office, because there's no room for them up here. So, yeah. So it's, again, it's totally fluid. No decisions have been made. All this is up in the air. And we've well, obviously just, done a lot of homework on this, trying to figure out how to make it work. So, and that, there's a lot of moving parts here. So, oh, thank you. Oh, holy, yeah. yeah. Oh, this okay. property right here. That's Reed Nelson. And, Everything around the church, all the way over to that black line, keep going. Everything over to that black line, now head north. Everything up to the to the north property of this church is all Reed Nelson. Even on okay, both, so Reed's got all of basically all of this. Even on both sides of the dirt road back to the salt shed. And he doesn't want us using this anymore. Right. It's our road, so he can't stop us. But if the salt shed is no longer back there, there's no point. There's no need to. Well, I, have seen some, I have seen some so, private vehicles back and forth on that. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, deer watchers. And, and, I, and now, now I'm thinking crazy. But what about the mailboxes here? I mean, it's again, it's totally fluid. But, you know. Okay, so it's just a matter of figuring out how we trade and wheel and deal. And, so okay. we're juggling a lot of balls here, obviously. Trying to, trying to make this so, yeah. so the only reason I, I bring any of this up, and again, I one of the things that I've, I've learned in, in business is you got to be careful about getting over your skis, or you know, putting the cart before the horse, or whatever whatever metaphor you want to use. And the the concern that I have, and we had on the budget, I think it was two years ago, a public works building. Corbett wanted it. it. I think it's a great idea. I think it, it's long overdue. We've got way too many vehicles sitting around this building that need to be uh, covered. And we couldn't afford it. And so it didn't get done. Now we're talking about more vehicles, at least one, possibly a bunch of trash cans. And we still don't have anything to cover it. So I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. My biggest concern is that we're getting the cart before the horse. Well, and that's that's why in council meeting, you know, when we said, yeah, let's pursue this, you know, I came back and said, well, first of all, are you guys willing to build a new building? You're going to build a building, get an add on to this one, because if you're not, then this is this is a waste of energy. Yeah, I agree. And, and so all that has to come together at the same time, the building and the equipment. Yeah, I agree. And I, I don't think it could be with the removal of the salt shed. And, and it could be. It absolutely could be. Yeah. So let me ask the the, the uh, tough question, brass question, whatever it's going to be. Uh, so are we looking at, are we looking at using the garbage uh, enterprise as a way to get a building, or are we looking at uh, the building being part of the enterprise? Both. Well, yes. Which would which you know what's what's the real reason? We know what the excuse is. What's the reason? Well, I, I would definitely say both okay. because. The building would facilitate garbage. Garbage would facilitate the building. Because again, an enterprise fund has to be self-sustaining. I mean, it's similar to what we're doing with the snow plowing. I mean, we took on snow plowing as opposed to contracting it out. One, because the people who were contracting it would not plow Summit Creek. And the second thing is we figured we could save quite a bit of money, uh, which I believe that's turned out to be mostly true. So, and uh, my biggest in, in thought about that is our level of service has increased tenfold. And I would agree with that too. So having
having said that, I, I think, you know, why does any city take on, I mean, why do we do our own water? Why do we do our own um, anything? And hopefully it's to save the residents money, but it's also hopefully to make the city a little more self-sustaining. Um, the, the thing that we really struggle with as a city is just our, our budget is so, <laughs> we've got one source really. Sales tax has picked up lately, that's been nice, but mostly it's property tax. So if we could. I can see where that's going up next year. Well, I can see with inflation that that's going to, you know, we'll have to go down for the next couple of years, probably with sales tax. It's not going to be as big a but, but regardless, I mean, the bottle's empty or the well is dry. And, and so you either spend less money or do more with the money that you got. You're not get, I mean, relatively speaking, you're not going to get any more money. <coughs> yeah, okay, you might you might raise taxes and, and, and generate another, what are we looking at, 30 grand or 36,000 bucks? Is you don't want to raise taxes. I, 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 I so no, 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 I'm, but, I'm, but I'm just yeah. saying, so what are you going to do? I think the concern and, is, do we, do we have sufficient money in a budget to support this? You don't have to. Well, this is the difference also well, between the well, no well, well, let, well, let yeah, me explain, though. I mean, in, in the overall... But, but let me explain. So, how do you bond? You, you leverage your revenue, right? So, what's your revenue? Twelve and a half bucks a can every month, right? Right. So, that's your revenue. So, and, and, and that's, what, that's what this bets out is, can you leverage that revenue and pay for garbage. No, you can't. Okay, so why not? Yes, he just said we could pay. It can pay for itself in a year. I just well, but we'll see. Right. I, I don't. In the but, figures that I did, I, I don't see how it's possible. I just, but what's what's a feasible what's a feasible payoff? Well, here, three years, yeah. seven years. What I just did was I just took twelve fifty times five hundred. No, there's it's there's, thirteen bucks. Yeah, but there's a ton of double cans. Well, I, that's why I use 500. I had it for double cans. Oh, no, so you're like, like 900. It's like 900. Okay, double. excuse it's me. Like, I'll just do it again. So let, I'm just go 13. But also keep in mind that that 1250 is, I mean, that's your gross. That's not no. your net. No, well, yeah, it's your gross. But the, but when you look at it that way, you also have to look at we pay 1250 or 13 bucks a can, and we pay for tipping fees. So that doesn't, that's not the total cost of doing garbage. That's right. We pay for that garbage by the ton delivered to the transfer station. So, so the you're still going to do that. You're yeah. still going to pay those tipping fees. The 1250 is what we currently pay to waste management. Just to pick it up and take your garbage to the transfer okay. station and then you pay for the, to the, the tonnage of the transfer so station. So that being said, how much do we charge, the city charge the customer per, because it's rolled in the water now, I don't ever, ever see it. How much do we charge? For the first can, second can, um, to, um, to the customer. What do we get charged? What do we have to? What does the city pay per can? Yeah, and what, does and the what city do we charge? collect per okay. can? That's the two questions. And again, we're getting into the budget committee's zone right here. I, well, but you got you got to give them that information. And, well, and they're going to ask for that too. Yeah, but like I said, I just want to make sure we're getting the right. They get the, the, those questions sent to them. So there's my there's this month's billings. Thirteen bucks for a can. What is it? It's not twelve fifty. It's thirteen bucks. Thirteen bucks a can times how many cans? Nine hundred. And this is another issue related to that. There's no guarantee of that nine hundred. Yeah. Those are Correct. extra cans. Every everybody in this in the city could all of a sudden say, I don't need two cans. But Turn they back in. They haven't. Oh, I know. Last, I know. But I'm just saying you have to look at that. In but that. when we started this process five years. 2016 is when I started doing the research for this the first time. We were at 740 cans. Total 740 cans. So, and so in seven years, you've increased 20 per, or what is that? I'm not saying it's a deciding factor. Right. I'm just saying it is a factor. Right. So, so you take you worse. Plan, you got to plan for the worst case. Yeah, scenario. best case, worst case. And, and if you're happy with both of them. Okay. So using the 13 times... 900? 900, I'm coming up with 12,675 12, a month, which is 15,000, or 152,100 a year. Out of that, we've got to pay employees, trucks, bonds, uh, maintenance, 
insurance. So that's that's what we need to figure out. And that, that, when I say we need Driver, to figure drivers out, wages. Yeah, that's what I said. But you know, oh. it, you know, all that all that's got to come out of that plus plus the fees to that. And that does not include the recycle. So I didn't add that into that. So that's another component. So anyway, that, that, these are things we need to look at. You know, 152,000 a year. Uh, let's round it up with with the other. Let's just round it up to 200 just to make the math easy. You know, but, you know, can, can we do this with 200,000? I mean, the building costs alone scare me at that price. Well, but again, you you bond for that. Yeah. Oh, you leverage that 150 thousand dollars a year, and in 10 years, you have a million, million and a half bucks. That's I'm, I'm and I know that's looking at the high end. But I, we're going to defer that but, to the budget committee right. and the council. Right. Correct. Okay. And it's important to also remember that as we look at this. Um, it's hard. It's dangerous to compare this directly, say, to like snowplow, because snowplow is a cost savings enterprise. It it doesn't gain us any money. This actually can make revenue, and that's something that's very important to always remember. Um, okay, so we'll jump back in here. Um, where we keep the trucks? We did that one. Who will be responsible for servicing the truck? Um, if city staff, do they have time to do it within the taking away from any other opportunities and requirements? Um, that is another thing we're going to have to analyze. Um, Probably part of the FTE. Okay. If you ask me, we do have that capacity. Um, but that's a conversation I need to have with the mayor. Do we have any estimates from existing companies what a, what a typical truck would require maintenance-wise per month or per year? Pro, Provo City. When I when I talk to Provo City, um, just in comparison, they run they run five routes. Every route they have seven trucks. They run five routes. When their trucks are ten years old, they unload. No, when their trucks are six years old, they unload their trucks. Okay. Their oldest truck at the time was ten years old, and it was a backup truck. Their trucks dump twelve hundred on average. Their dump their trucks dump twelve hundred cans per day per truck. And do we know what the maintenance costs were. Uh, I don't. I'm sure we could get that information. I'm sure probably would change. I think that would. I think that would be a good indicator, especially if the older vehicles. If we're looking at right. taking up use. Something we need to realize as we start looking at Provo's, the Orms. Uh, I know Orm, Orm has its own vehicle waste management. I think it is waste management. But if we look at these communities, you know, Provo's got an economy of scale we don't even come close to, to matching. So they can they can run a truck five days a week and have spares for for breakdown. We're looking at Buying the same thing, you know, buying the same truck, using the same, and we're only using it one or two days a week, so we're not leveraging that truck uh, near 100% of the time. We're only getting the duty cycle of, or duty rate, whatever you want to call it, of you know, maybe 20, 30 percent, where they're probably getting closer to 60, 70, or 80 percent. So that's something. That's an advantage. That I, I would agree. I, what they my have, point is, not going to happen. As Mike said, that's you know what I do for a living is you know high artificial intelligence and maintenance, and there's going to be a way to to say okay. It's going to be this much cost per can, or this much cost per duty cycle, or this much cost per mile driven, because they have hills also, just like we do. And so my idea was, okay, well, if we're trying to find it, what would be a reasonable cost structure? Well, let's look at what their maintenance costs are per per can tipped, or something of that nature, and then compare that, you know, especially with the older vehicles as opposed to the newer ones. So I just sent an email over to to you, Mark. Okay. I sent Wayne, Corbett, and David as well. I would have sent it to you out of your email address. So and if you could send it. He should be on the list. We should just, he, he should be NS60, whatever I can't remember. Well, if you could forward it to him, that should would be, be great. Um, but this is the waste analysis, analyzation, and um, kind of preliminary approach Spanish Fork did last year okay. for garbage. So their engineer sent this to me, um, and it's extremely comprehensive. David Peterson. Oh, perfect. I can forward that to you then now, too. I've only been there three or four years. That was not there. I just... Well, sorry, Ben. It's, 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 <laughs> is it in mine? <laughs> I know. David. I've been using your other one. You're in NS yeah, so or whatever. NS915, David. Yeah. 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 You've been using that. Yeah. It's not in mine, but I'll get it to you. Well, here. Thank right you. Sorry. There. Um, so that, uh, that analysis is extremely comprehensive, so that probably will answer a lot of those different questions for you. I handed over my list, sorry. And when, you, when you think about it, you, you look at one of the things that we did with snow removal was we increased service. Um, 
Well, res residents have expressed an interest in recycle, expressed an interest in green waste. You, you have that as an option. If that's, what, if that's what you want, if that's what the residents want and they're willing to pay for it, you can offer it substantially cheaper than, than contracting it out. Great. Okay. Uh, what salary is proposed to pay the driver? Um, are they union workers? Another great question that will need to go to the Finance Committee. Um, how much should the city be collecting to support the project? We've discussed those. Um, does the amount in 15 above, so that's the, the cost there, allow for a 15 or five to ten thousand dollar fund for major expenditure? So one comment I would uh, add to that is if we do go out for a bond, if, if mm -hmm. the council approves this and goes out for a bond, they will require a bond reserve up front. So part of the loan will have a reserve for any type of maintenance like that that, that they will require, just like with any other bond that we, we would decide to take it up. Okay, go ahead. I'm just getting that down, so I'll. I would really prefer not to do a bond. Because just taking out the bond has a bond that feeds over what's going on. So we're going to start out. So we're going to start some cool art options. And I saw it. Full-size uh, tanker truck, you know, fire truck. That went for around three hundred fifty bucks. It was pure sale. Oh yeah. It was like you, can more, you, can, you can get more. It was a good more than that. You can get more than that at scrap metal if that's all you did. Yeah. You throw it to Swenson's. Yeah, and it was it was a perfectly feasible, usable truck. So, mm -hmm. then I, the next question, I question seventeen, kind of mm -hmm. goes right back to circuit back to the <coughs> that we were correct. talking about, correct? Uh, potentially. It, it, it comes down to me just saying, hey, there's, there's some potential here. Okay. For me, it comes down to also, because of the way the budget cycle works, is we get money, it goes in, right, and then it's budgeted out for the year. There is a possibility if the numbers work, and the numbers have to work. It's not a we roll the dice on it. But it could put back any money that it currently it takes in the beginning, right? Um, but that has to be that is extremely yeah, tight. Uh, budget committee will, is very good at this. How, how, explain a little bit how the enterprise fund works. How an enterprise fund works. The state, the state regulates enterprise funds because it's just another tax. And so the state, the state watches them really close. The state dictates that you're going to make a minimum 2% and you can't make more than 6%. Actually, so, not with enterprise funds. Less, less change since I've left. Enterprise funds, because it is an enterprise, you're allowed to make profit. Um, well, they, is there a limit? No. Well, yeah. yes and no. You can you can do a, a one-time fund transfer every year. Uh, you have to justify it because again, it's just another tax. But but that's how the water fund is. The water fund is an enterprise fund, and it's regulated: two point two two percent minimum, six percent maximum. And, and obviously, if if you're if if you're budgeting long term, then you're you're but you're factoring in that future expense, and so to get it between two and six percent is it hard to do? No, but you got to spend the money. If you're going to collect it, you're going to spend it. You're you're watchdog to make sure that you're not just wasting the money, and so it's it's regulated it's regulated per type. I mean the water fund is and the water fund is an enterprise fund. I, that's the only enterprise fund we have. I can't imagine it would be any different than that. Yeah, sewer should be an enterprise fund. Sewer is too. Yeah, but sewer right now, we don't have an enterprise fund. We should. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we have hey, it. Anyway, it's a, yeah. yeah, but you can't. Well, but it all, it's a pass okay. through. It's it's out. Fund. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It shouldn't be. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't call it an enterprise fund only because it's not doing what it should do. We have no depreciation, we have no uh, asset. Management. It, it's just Payson charges us this, we charge this, and it all goes to Payson except for, uh, you know. So when we get done. a month per connection. It, it's, it's not acting like an enterprise fund. So when we get done with our sewer analysis and we get them to potentially shift our rates um, back quite a bit down, lower than what they currently are, we're going to need to look at that, aren't we? Oh, absolutely. Is to get that enterprise fund yeah, so covering. Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to go to Payson and say, you know what, you just charge us for what you treat. 
You charge us the rate that you that, you, that it costs to treat effluent. You charge us for what you treat, and we'll do the rest. We'll charge the residents. We'll depreciate. We'll What's replace. Basically, we're paying for uh, maintenance, cleaning, the line, maintenance, cleaning. sonar. See, we're not, and we're not doing any of that. But was the understanding at the beginning the patient would be doing that, correct? And That's they right. could charge us whatever it cost to do it. There wasn't a set fee. They could charge us whatever the cost the cost was to do it. Well, they don't want to do it. And if they're going to do it, you're going to pay for it. And that's that's why they're trying to get out of it because they just they don't want to do it flat out. You can't you can't pay them enough to do it because they don't want to do it. And they just bumped the rates. So everybody on sewer just went from what fifty five a month to sixty five. Why don't they want to do it? Because they don't have the manpower. They don't have the desire. But they the don't money's want there. The money would be there because well, that would charge the residents for that fee. And if they charge the residents enough to make it worth it to do it. They would be the bad guy, and so they don't even want to mess with it. Well, city, cities don't mind being bad guys. Well, Payson doesn't want to take the black guy for providing a service to Woodland Hills that Woodland Hills is going to have to pay through the nose right. to cover. Okay. We talked about that last time yeah. also. Yeah. So what are the costs of the city to use the county transfer stations to deposit our garbage? It's our transfer station. They are... I mean, we so to speak, yeah. we're, we're members of the Solid Waste District, so we're part owners. Nothing changes. So we don't... We currently pay those. So all we pay waste management right now is for pickup and disposal. Just And just then like we every, pay the transfer station how much waste management says, we're here from Woodland Hills, they go in and drop it off and leave and we get the bill. So that's part of our city budget, but it's not a, a resident expense. It's... Part of the building. It should be part of the building. It's built into the. It's built into the building. Was it built into the thirteen dollars a month? Yeah. That that's what. That's the difference between what the residents get charged and what waste management charges us. The difference covers the tipping fees and a little bit of administration for the city on the city's part. So it's, it's, it's built into it. Well, it. It, it's built into it, but it's not because right now your general fund subsidizes your garbage, subsidizes your garbage a little bit, or at least it did. Yeah, it doesn't lot anymore. But so uh, it was it was probably only I, six I or eight thousand. I'm confused because we're saying it does and it doesn't. It does and it doesn't throughout looking at some of this financial information, and so that in my mind that really needs to get. And now, how, whether we do it or well, budget does and that's how, what this is for, we, is to bet that out. How are we subsidizing garbage through the general fund? So Wendy made mm -hmm. a decision that she did not want to charge what we're being charged for recycle. And so you were getting charged 12 or 13 bucks a can for recycle, but you were only paying 6 or 7 or 8 bucks? No, it was like a... Two bucks it was only difference two or something. So our solution to that problem was to double our pick up on cans and raise that rate even more? That's why you're vetting it out. Okay, I just thought I'd bring that up. Okay. <laughs> well, so, okay, I remember that decision, mm -hmm. and the idea was that we were making like a dollar or two on the regular can pickup. So were we subsidizing recycling? Yeah, but we weren't subsidizing the overall fund. What's the difference? Well, if the money goes in and then the money comes out, right? If not enough money difference. goes in, we were getting we enough money to cover all of the expenses for garbage. I don't, I don't think so. We were. So right now we make around ten to fifteen grand on our current setup of garbage. Does a that year. include tipping Over a year? A year. Okay. Does that include tipping fees? Mm-hmm. That's okay. when we're done. We are netting a small amount of money. So, if I may, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an analogy of two buckets, okay? Please. So right now we've got one bucket where we're pouring our, taking and pouring our uh, solid waste collection and our, re, our no, recycling. Recycling. recycling collection into one bucket, uh -huh. and that bucket's filling up and spilling over. But if we were, barely dripping over, okay, but if we were to take two buckets and we were to put one bucket with recycle and the other one with solid waste, the one bucket with the recycle would run dry faster than we could fill it up. Correct. Okay. 
And we're subsidizing recycling, but we're subsidizing it with garbage. With garbage. Yeah. So the two together are making yeah. money. To me, I, I, yeah. to me yeah, I was kind of like, okay, that's fine. That's a wash. I, I don't so care. what's important to understand, though, because I'm on the board for the transfer station, and there, because of the way the economy is currently going, here's your silver lining. You ready, guys? We need one right now. Because of the way the economy is going, raw materials is going up, which is now making recycling something people are willing to buy. Probably good. So we're, for the first time in about five to six years, the transfer station is actually making money. So the transfer station as well has been subsidizing recycle. So they're going to be able to reduce our rate? Well, well, we are looking at what that looks like into the future. And if it continues down this trajectory, we will have our rate decreased. Or, or a windfall, or just not have your rates increase because your owners in the transfer station, your owners in the district, the Correct. solid waste district is all of the cities but, that, that bought into it. But bottom line for now, the city is spending more to on recycling than it's making. Correct. Okay, that's the bottom line. No, yep. The city isn't. Residents are. However you want. To, however you want. To. <laughs> I think mean, it's a point. I mean, yeah. For example, I, I would object to to me paying for recycling. If I choose not to recycle, I don't want to pay for my neighbor because my neighbor chooses to recycle. And you I don't think that's right. You and have I have that. Yeah. So that's another that's, factor. That's in. a perfect. That's a that's an excellent item for public comment at the council. And the well, other thing, I think when we do whatever we're going to do as a position paper or whatever, and outlining <coughs> this discussion and others that we'll have, that point needs to be made. In, that. in fact, if it does increase, then the amount we're we're picking up a bigger amount. So I don't I don't currently recycle because I don't believe it actually is self sustaining. I never have it. Well, well you you see them you, maybe not in this particular <laughs> location, but you see them all dumped in the same location. Yeah. Right. Well, it's so, been China for the last. So, in the last three to five years is the first time the United States has not been exporting their recycling. Yeah, especially these, particularly plastic. They have they mm -hmm. no longer accepted that. So I don't I don't recycle because they typically stereotypically end up in the same location. Okay. And so why would I pay extra every month just do uh, just off throwing my, my trash can? I don't care. Well, you get your recycle cheaper than your garbage. <laughs> So just put so all your garbage. I guess my point was the more people just feel yes. all green and green and warm about uh, doing good, the more we're subsidized. So, so this the might help you sleep better at night, but all recycle in our district does not go to the new Maryland landfill. Okay. It all heads to a recycling facility. Okay. <laughs> I can sleep that better at night. <laughs> but you're still life. not going to recycle. Yeah. Well, <laughs> why would you? When I can have two garbage cans for less than a garbage can in a recycle, why? why, can't why? It, it, I don't. I don't need one garbage can. Well, I got okay, it. okay. So, three so things on those slides. I actually thought of this this week. So, do two things. On the garbage cans, do you get charged? Is it a weekly rate for the can, or is it a monthly? Monthly. Rate? It's a monthly. monthly. Okay. If you have two cans and you don't put one on the street, you still get charged. Is it yes, charged yes. for pickup? Okay. Use it or lose it. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. So you can. You know, like I said, you can't just say, I'll put mine out every day. They don't count the can when they go by. You can right. charge, period, whether you use it or not. Right. Correct. So, okay. so they have two different size cans. That's the other thing that annoys me. So my, they broke mine one time. They are picking it up. They gave me a small little small little toothpaste can in return. Like, like <laughs> I see all the other big cans. Like, hey, wait, wait a second. This is, this is Dr. Jody. This is something you I'm not okay with. Wait till you go to Walmart and get a seven pound of bag of ice. <laughs> because it used to be 10 pounds, now it's seven. Yeah, for six and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're, all, with 11 inches, they're, they're all supposed to be 96 gallon cans. And so well, that was that was most likely just operator error. The flunky driver of the truck delivered yeah. the wrong can. That is it. I'm, I'm sending a strongly worded letter to it. Yeah. Don't send it to <laughs> Jody, please. <laughs> but it is important to understand that if we can talk to her tomorrow, she can get that on Thursday's route, and you can put that on the street, and they'll swap it out on this Thursday. Okay, so I can do that. So I just, I said it's just, it's, it's talk to one. Jody Dunn, finish. So here's, here's the other question here, and that is, I don't have a recycle thing. And for green waste, this is this is something I think we should consider. If we had a green, as in throw all your tree limbs in this, whatnot, 
would that save us? Because you know people start throwing in chunks of, uh, of everything. Uh, everything they you know they, they cut well, out the trees. <laughs> you know, cut out the trees and everything. They put in there. We're paying for a lot of green waste. And the is there hardest a, part for us from the transfer station and the new era dump standpoint right. is neither of those locations do green waste. Okay. Now, but if you fill up your trailer and take it down and dump, they have it off to the left. You can yeah. drop your green waste, but it's going to the landfill as well. Right. We don't but, do but composting do. or anything like that. And Some do. We've not pursued it, but I would I would dare Springville, for instance. Springville does right. their own green waste. Mm -hmm. They do their mulching. They do their recycling, and, and it's all green waste. I would I would have a hard time thinking that Springville wouldn't let us participate in that yeah. in, in the green waste. And so, if you wanted to, you totally regulate it. I mean, one of the things that the, the, the trucks have a camera that looks in the bin, and so when the driver picks up, he's supposed to watch what goes in the bin. If you're throwing tires, if you're throwing TVs, he's supposed to take it out and put it back on your doorstep. Now, if you're so throwing it up into smaller pieces, is what you're saying. Well, just regulate <laughs> yourself. Regulate yourself. I, I, you know. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't be so flippant. <laughs> But, uh, or put it in a box so you can't tell what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm looking from a cost standpoint for the city. If we had, rather than recycle, if we had a green and a, a you know solid waste, would we actually come out on top from a, from a cost standpoint? Because I suspect that, like me, lots of people are throwing green stuff into the regular bins. Where do you put your lawn clippings, your grass clippings? Lawn, grass, your tree I, shrubs. The, the, deer. the transfer station nature. loves it. There's a corner for that. The transfer station loves that because it actually helps us yes, yeah. at the near dump because it starts breaking down faster and it facilitates in the creation of natural gas. It is big, which we pump off. And then the, the transfer way. station is, is pumping off and selling the methane. Okay. Yeah. I, I went for 28 years without a single problem with these weeds. In the last year, last two years, I've had just thistles grow like crazy. So I'm cutting them down. I'm trying to throw them in that exactly. trash can as quickly as I can. I didn't do is cut the head off. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cut that head off. <laughs> no, before it goes. Before it does that. So is the city wanting also to pick up the recycling cans as well? And I'd say yes. And it requires the exact same truck. You don't have to clean it in between. You just, it actually helps clean the truck out. <laughs> you dump the recycling out. That's what most yeah, cities do. What's the... the so, the sale of recycled cardboard. And you know, everything today is, comes in boxes. Everybody gets boxes box. What happens if the city owned a, a compact compactor in cardboard that you allowed the people to come put there and so you sell it? It doesn't deal with the you don't, yeah. you don't even have to buy the comp the compactor. I mean Warehouser, uh -huh. Warehouser will, will provide the compactor as long as you sell them the cardboard. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a, you see the bells outside the grocery store. That's how they do it. They don't own the compactors. Okay. Well, say if you just the had something like that for the, the city, recycler owns the compactor. Hey, let's get rid of the recycle part of it. Let's just say you put your car for everything else in the trash and forget it for now. The, and the, then the city can make all the money off of it. The, so the biggest hesitation is the mess. Correct. Is the hassle. Well, well, somebody, 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 you're talking about building a, a building down there for your machinery. You know, it would be something out of the way. But if yeah. you could make money at it, it's something for us to add on our list of investigation. I say half the waste we each have in the household now is probably cardboard. It is. It seems to you see all I mean, Amazon's at everybody's door five times a day, and that's the way it works. But I know there's a speaking of which, money made of notification to my Amazon. If right, you so could so teach the people to not put paper and other stuff if it doesn't belong, well, that would be his, a problem. Mark. And <laughs> his, <laughs> historically, <laughs> historically, the residents up here have been really good about. It. Okay. If it's cardboard, it's cardboard. If it's if it's not, you'd have to trade a little bit. And, the watch it, and the residents have, have learned. Really and the green waste bins, sure, they're really good at that. So e even know. though you see this dumpster on the side of the road, the residents have been really good about not putting garbage in it and only putting green waste in it. Okay. Yeah, trees and stuff. It's the thought that you know, on a machine or, or like I said, selling the cardboard, but let the city collect it for free. People can drive it to their thing and be done with it. You know. Yeah, I just tend to agree that if you're going to do this, you got to put it in the green. <laughs> and run a compactor, and then do maintenance on the garbage trucks. So that's another variable: is we can leave the costs all as is currently and generate the revenue, or we could use this like snowplow and just basically charge the residents and decrease that rate. 
Well, for either me, way, either way, it's it's a cost benefit analysis is what you've got to do here. Yes, and for me, I prefer this over property tax Good. because we get a one to one dollar ratio here. We don't own property tax. I have to raise you for me to get a dollar. I've got to raise your property tax five, right? Whatever. So the last one: What plans um, are there for alternate driver or for vacations and sick leaves times in the main? Right. So I rolled so that up with that. items number 7, 13, and 20. That's the full-time equivalent employee. So, you know, that means you may have two employees working 30% of the time, which gives you a 0.6 or however that divides that time. Okay. Exactly. Okay. We'd have to have that, though, in the, in the structure. We do need backups. That's Corbett's like sixth on the list or something. So when you're doing your analysis, are you taking those those two young men and, and taking out one day a week of what they're assigned to do for the city as a as a guide that somebody in that position could then be a dump truck driver. Be that dump. So and that's what I'm talking about is one day a week to do that service. And if you take whatever whatever assignments they have day yeah. in and day out and exclude a day, where do they stand with being able to do the things they're asked to do? So, I just, I know you're yeah. in the process of doing that, but I, I see that as, as a good approach to help right. do that, that kind of analysis. We don't want to just apply a full-time full employee to do this. It would not take 40 hours a week, per se, for the operation to, 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 to operate the system. But what do we do with the leftover time, or what if we need, you know, 50 hours a week? I, that's what you're trying to, we're trying to balance out. Thank you, Phil Pompels. So what I'm analyzing right now, with garbage. Um, without you know putting the start before the horse, as David likes to put it, is or saying something that potentially is not true because I'm not done with my analysis is I'm already seeing a lot of excess um, capacity due to current waste in the system around personnel. Okay. And if we can yeah. use that, that's exactly. And if we can use that waste or yeah. inefficiencies, however you want to call it, Correct. To, to to do that, that and that would be a good question. Again, it's not us. But they, I think need to be sold here. It's going to need to be the the budget committee is probably going to work really close with the council on this, as long as we make sure everybody's got the right questions. Correct. Okay. Council Member, mm -hmm. I had a question on um, you know speaking of funding for our projects here. At one point, uh, about a year ago, we were discussing um, the amount of money we need set aside for snow plowing or for snow snow plowing and salting. And we had a fairly light winter. Do we know where we ended up in terms of budgeted versus mm -hmm. versus actual costs? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got all those numbers. I don't have them off the top of my head, but we ended up like saving twenty or thirty thousand off of what our budget was. Okay. Now you might go, well, what happened to that money then? Well, the answer is. Corbett often will buy salt in June. Right, to save money. And it both saves money and it's it's a lower cost for the salt because it's a season into next year. And right. so we'll spend the money and then if we don't use it the next year, then you know, great. Which is fine. I was just I was just trying to come up with some ideas. Like for instance, we talk about the equivalent of full time employee, the FP, right? And so several things, and this is just a truism that everybody knows. If you if you nip a problem in the bud, it's much cheaper than if you wait until that completely falls apart. So we we run into all sorts of stuff. You know, speaking of public works, where you might see a, a corner of an edge of a, of a street going out or something like that. A little bit of maintenance if we had a full time you know EFT EFP guy coming in, that they could manage. Just your job is to drive the city every day and look for problems, solve whatever potholes starting to form. If it's this big, it's a lot cheaper than when it's this big. It's just something of that nature. I think we could actually justify costs on many occasions just in solving problems before they get big. You know, and then on, along with what uh, David just said to add to that, yeah, why, why we may have had a mild winter and we're able to save some money on salt, I think a lot of the budget savings that we looked at were probably eaten up by fuel costs. Well, well, some. This yeah. last I mean, winter we was a terrible. Fuel hike, I think, but after the snow season. Yeah, this, this well, last winter, no big deal. Well, but saying if we'd have had a bad winter like we had a couple winters ago, then our, we'd have felt that fuel cost. So yeah, so here, here's the, we have this discussion whenever we do the budget. <laughs> okay. 
Especially the Hey, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't spend $30,000 on, on snow plowing. Do we really need that much? And the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> Do you really want to plan on a really light winter every year? <laughs> no. So we just can't, there are certain funds, I'll, I'll say it that way, that you, you, you don't want to cheat in the budget cycle. Now what you'll do is at the end, when you're reconciling your budget, like when you, at the end of the year, when you know now what your actual costs are versus what you um, plan for, that's when you can then go, okay, we didn't spend that much, so what should we do with it? Well, sometimes we'll make an extra payment on the truck, so we're not, have, or we'll actually buy a piece of equipment. We'll, I think we bought some salt spreaders. But it's a use or lose it situation, correct? No. Anything you don't, well, as far as that category, if, if you don't use it in the budget, it goes back into the general fund. It yeah. does go back into the general fund. It's not a, well, you lost it, it's, it's no longer a payment. It's not like oh, the no. state okay. takes it. We're not We're buying a $50,000. But the payment. problem is, it's not, no. it's not like you can't, <laughs> you can't roll or the seats. Didn't spend it's different. and lower <laughs> next year's budget in anticipation of it being a while. Right. Year. So no, you know, that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. And we discussed this a while back, I just, yeah. just forgot. No. <laughs> so... Anyway, I think that was pretty much every question that uh, Wayne had uh, delivered, and, and those are good questions. Uh, I have maybe no more, well, I do have one more question, is, you know, uh, the contract that we've got, I mean, do we end up, have we had issues with the contract? Are we having to find new contractors going out for bid for different contractors because they want to do it? Has that been any? So we just barely, renegotiated the contract okay. and signed it for a one-year contract. So we're year-to-year -year on this? No, we're not a year-to-year. -year. We're the only time solid waste management has ever done a one-year contract, and that's compliments of Chris. Chris is that the anticipation of what might happen here? Correct. Okay, normally we sign how many years? Two to three. Two to three. Okay, and so the other, you know, so by question would be is, you know, are, are we in good terms with the contract folks or are they, yes. you know, you can get, uh, you know, you can get into uh, contest about that, you know, well, we, they're the only game in town, we have to deal with them, we've got a bad relationship with them, you know, it is Woodland Hills, and, you know, it costs three times as much to run a truck up here as it does it. They, they, know, sport. they know they're not the only game in town. Okay. They we, know that we could go to Republic, we could go to... Okay, so that was, that's the question, country. so that would be a consideration into this process. Yes. Um, just just a you know a comment to, that uh, that was a question, but the, another comment I that I see from a perspective I I see one you know I see a lot of unconcerns. Uh, you know if we're only going to make you know two or three percent, is it worth the troll? That that'd be one comment or question I have. But I do see if we can leverage this into a public works building. I'm not just talking about a garbage facility, but an entire public works building. So you would have Provost Public Works Facility has everything right there, including garbage. Yeah. Uh, if, if we can leverage that, that, that is a benefit if we can do it. Uh, I just, that's why I asked earlier a question. Are we using garbage as an excuse to get a public works building or will, you know, that's, that's why I asked that question. So if we can actually benefit in the form of we can get a new building, work out with the property owners down there, but uh, you know, they'll, they'll take that now. Do they want, I think you asked to answer this question, do they want the property that the salt shed is on now? Would they be part of the swap, part of yeah. the trade? Okay. Another question, would, we would have to abandon those two wells, right? They will do it. But they will be abandoned. They will yeah. no longer be available to the city for use. Right. Okay. Question, do we lose the water right with those two no, wells? We we'll transfer to the no, new uh, well. Because we're a municipality, all of our water is listed at all of our sources. Okay, so, so we, we don't lose the water. No. We just lose two sources. Or uh, we just lose two, two points of diversion. Two, two, right two, points. Two, two points of diversion. Well, they're not dry. I know. But, but they would as well be. But they would be. But the bottom line is, yeah, whatever. Because we have, what we do is we use all points of diversion for all areas, all points of service. I didn't know that we were going to sell the water rights that go to those two wells. <laughs> right. Or the city was going to keep no, the water. The water isn't, isn't attached to one specific well. One, it's attached to every well. But it can be. Right. I mean, if, if we're going to sell these two wells and this guy comes in and says, hey, I want the water that's that's related to those two wells. No. Okay. That would be a negotiation. I will say this, Corbett. I am a bit concerned that, like, with the Maple Canyon well, we're 
I, I realize we still have that right, but we no longer have storage there. Maple, yeah, we do. Uh, Maple Canyon? Yeah. We still own 40% of the well. And, and, the, and the tank and everything. 40% of that facility is ours. Okay. I want to have a backup, is what I'm saying. I will never feel... Nobody like worries about it more than I do. Yeah, I'll bet. So that is part of my question. Okay. But with those two wells down down below, that was that was one of the major benefits is we kept talking about, okay, how much would it cost for us to bring those online? And I know that it was substantial, but it wasn't like as much as a brand new well would be. Well your money is by far better spent someplace else. I mean we've talked to Elk Ridge about doing a co-op between us and Elk Ridge and using Elk Ridge's Lofer Canyon well as a backup. Um, we still have the Maple Canyon well, which produces more water than our, our new well, but the new well is cheaper water because it's higher up. Right. Um, yeah, it's a different aquifer. No. Well, the Maple Canyon and the Broad Hollow are in the same aquifer. I'm talking about ours. Our current, right? Well, We're the new well and the Salem, the well we share with Salem, are in the same aquifer. Okay. But the, the Loaf Canyon well is not. Um, Elk Ridge is interested in doing a cooperative agreement so that we can back each other up, if, if that were the case. But you're, you're, we just did a new water master plan, or it's in process right now, a new water master plan. Uh, Craig upped the uh, requirement for fire flow, mm -hmm. which, which we're in process right now. We, in fact, you guys may have just approved the council <coughs> for a, what, two the, impact, two? Impact, the impact fee study. And that would that will build it that will build a new tank and upgrade the broad hollow well in process. I mean that will that will accomplish that. So okay. I mean there's there's a lot in process. Um, don't don't think you got much in those two lower wells because they're super expensive. They're a lot more expensive than anything you've got. Plus the wells need to be refurbished. They're eighty one and uh, nineteen eighty one and nineteen seventy nine is when they were installed. Mm -hmm. And they both draw sand, and they're both only about forty percent. They're both only about forty percent of their original output. So you got a ton of money to spend to not get much out of them. Okay. I mean, Ted. Ted. I mean, I've been through all this with Ted. Ted could probably give you a lot more of the details as far as an opinion on whether or not it's worth it. But. Um, so back to question on Mark on Mark's points. The if if for some reason this land swap and deal doesn't happen, the only thing we're out is a covered parking place for the dump truck. Do we consider that? What, what do you mean? If 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 it's, if the exchange doesn't go through, we keep the salt shed that we have. We don't have any space to store this dump truck. Garbage or garbage truck. truck. I'm sorry, garbage truck. Sure. So, well, so yeah, I, yes and no. I mean, I've done plans. You could you could add on 40 feet to the end of the current salt okay, no, I, and, and have two bay doors that you could put garbage. But is that in. a critical part of getting cover? Cover. Oh, that I, I think I, I think you're I, I think you're wasting your time and money if if you don't have some place to put. Don't the trucks have to be kept from freezing? Yeah. So you you have a place that's gonna you know and, and so it's gotta be heated. Whereas indoor is sufficient. Well, indoor, just keep it from freezing. Yeah, just keep it. I've never had anything. I've, well, I've, I've never I've had, had anything. I've frozen it inside a metal shed before. Well, frozen. Yeah, we're not talking metal shed. We're talking, no, I know. We're talking building. But yeah, the but other that, thing that's critical to, to the plan to have to have covered parking for it. Well, well, the, well, the direction I've got from the council in the past was we're not doing it if we have to park them outside. Well, we're not parking anything else outside. outside. Are we, I mean, excuse me. We're <laughs> parking everything else outside. And and the grief we get is unreal. But the council seems to put up with it. Well, only because we feel the complaints, not not the council. I mean, you've seen this stuff out here. You know, yeah, see how yeah, often yeah. it moves. It goes from over here to over there, and then those guys get tired of it, so we move it from over there to over here, and then these guys get tired of it, so then we move it up on top, and then. It's a circus. I mean, if that's what you guys want as residents, hey, I just take your money. 
I don't live here, right? No, but I'm asking how critical is that? I, I think it's to get you to put a garbage process. truck outside, and I think that's I think that's an the and grief. Throwing money out the window. Well, my concern, it's not going to be too horrible. But you can put it in a storage unit down in Salem if, if that's all you're trying to do. Um, but the, the benefit is through the enterprise fund, through the, the service, you gain space. Now, is 100% of that space going to be used for garbage? No. There's no, I mean, you're going to, stuff's just going to bleed everywhere. Right. I mean, like it does right now. So I, I just added a question 21, climate control for vehicles. Okay, uh, what, what would be the minimum requirement? Uh, I, I mean, when you pick up trash, you know, I, can, I can imagine a bunch of frozen trash left over, freezing up the entire system. The other thing about keeping it indoors is, um, and odor, I'm gonna add, what kind of odor are you going to add to the, the building? So I mean, if we were to park a garbage truck below here, how would that go? Provo sells as long as it doesn't bake in the truck, it's minimal. Okay. That's and awesome. you just never leave it empty. Or you never leave it full. So just 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 a couple yeah. questions come that as we were talking came up. So okay. Yeah. Provo parks they, they keep their they keep their backup trucks outside of your room. Okay. Because they're cleaned and not and they well they take care of it. Yeah. But it's I mean it's it's a backup truck. They're not too concerned about it, but you know the sun is hard on. But then also their facility is uh, down by the treatment plant, the wastewater treatment plant. Oh, you and can't smell so the truck. Pardon? You can't smell the truck. Yeah, pretty much was. So I mean, they're, what they're saying <laughs> in the industrial area is not a residential area. You know, we start trying to store them up here. Uh, yeah. Then I can just see the potential for the problems. Well, and it would be bad. For me, it comes down to one real thing that makes it worth the the work to figure out if this thing's viable or not. We currently have two income streams, right? Property tax, which is what, David, 90%? Yeah. About 90% of our revenues is tax property tax. There. 54% property tax. Of our revenue. 54%, yeah. Okay. Uh, general revenue. Okay, so it's 54%. And then everything else, right? Charges for services, yada, yada, yada. What I'm really looking to do is find any possible avenue that the city can make money that is not, so we're not wholly dependent on property tax revenue. And this is one of the most lucrative that we've been able to find at this no. point. What about Elk Ridge? You want to talk oh, about that? That's another great option is, <coughs> I've spoken with Terry, oh, who's the head of the transfer station. Terry Ficklin. Terry Ficklin, he's brilliant. But he says there's a few avenues by which we could even start picking up for other cities. Now, you have to be careful. You know this better than probably any of us, Mark. Is we cannot compete directly with waste management, with Republic. What we can do, though, is create partnerships so give a piece of ownership to Elk Ridge, and now we take on Elk Ridge as well. And then Goshen and Mona or whoever. What, uh, what we're essentially doing is forming an interlocal agency. Correct. Now we are no longer, the city never is no longer in the garbage business. The city is a member, just like it's a member of the transfer station. So that Correct. essentially does take us out of, out of the business because now we just turned it over to the- Except Except as long as you maintain control, we have. That's one thing I was going to say. As, as, you're the because manager. we have board members, we would have control over it, and Correct. we could control the cost just like any other. You know, just like we have control cost over the transfer station. But at, at that point, there's not a regulation that says you can't turn a profit on Elk Ridge. Right. There's an agreement between you and Elk Ridge, and you split the profit because you become an interlocal agency. Right. Correct. But it also yeah. what it does is it also increases the depth of revenue potential should anything come up. Sure. If you have a major issue, then you actually have deeper pockets that are spread across the board. Typically, what it does okay. is it doesn't increase revenue, it lowers cost. When you right. do an air yeah, but I'll just say this. We're not, yeah. we're not in the garbage business. No, but if you, if you can hire a full-time guy <laughs> and keep that, that person, his, his time is by far much more productive if he can concentrate on one thing. I, I, I hear you, Corbett. I do. I know financially you're exactly right. We're not in the garbage business. 
we're a city and we're a small city and honestly I don't know anyone in the city that really wants to run a garbage business and my concern is we you know again you, you can implement something and as long as you know you're here or as long as Ben's here great but the second you guys leave now now what have you set up the system correctly? I don't, I don't think it's as big right. a, an obstacle as, as maybe we're, because it's so, everything's so unknown right now, there's a lot of uh, concern. At, at least pursue it. At least vet it out and well, see if it's, right. if it's worth I'm, doing. I'm okay, it with, I'm okay with doing it for the city. I just feel like this talk of interlocal agreements and doing it for other cities is That's crazy. That's a potential well, long leg. Well, right? I think it's crazy. But well, and I think what we're currently doing in the city is insane. It's because not. we're running penny to penny, paycheck to paycheck for the last ten years plus, right? No. And no. why not help but us create a plan for? When have, when have you ever had enough to grant every every request every request for a budget item? I'm willing to bet you could talk to Mary Kafusi, and she would say she can't do that either. True. So well, we, did, we just launched there will, refinery. There will always be yeah, more needs than there are so resources. Resources. That's 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 life. What yeah. I'm trying to do is generate more resources. And and I understand. I'm just saying, if you want to do that as a private citizen, great. I don't think as a city we should get in the garbage business. Okay, so Dave, if you don't mind on that, that's kind of what I was hoping to you know outline here is. I don't think we're a decision maker in this process at all, or even in a position to make recommendations. I just want to make sure that if the council is going to pursue this or, or even look at this, I just want to make sure we get as much information to them as we possibly can to, to help you guys make your decision. Yeah, and I, I'm just saying, as we scope that decision, I think we should leave the interlocal part yeah. out. Well, that's a, if we find out this works from the numbers and we decide to go down the garbage for Woodland Hills, and if it becomes successful, that's when you then start talking about the future beyond that point. But right now, it's fun to say, hey, there is potentially a future. And these are the options for us to potentially consider. We're not making any decisions. Well, We're even, just even, possible. even if your interlocal agreement only, only consisted of getting more capacity out of what you have. You run that garbage truck for Woodland Hills, you run that garbage truck one day. Okay, Elk Ridge, you get it for two days a week. What you're saying is four days a week is a stranded investment. Exactly. Okay. And, it's, and it sits there and does nothing for you. Right. And I, I, I tend to want to agree with Dave on that. We're getting way ahead of ourselves I'm talking about that. Let's talk about even if this whole idea is feasible. The, uh, so unless there's any more comment or any other questions that, uh, that we'd like to, to add to this list of questions, the way you, you covered a lot, you, on your list of questions, very, very insightful and uh, very inclusive. So I would make a motion that we pass these questions on to either the city council <coughs> and, or, and or the budget committee for their input and uh, they can use that as part of their process should they pursue it, they decide to pursue it. Are we going to have a position paper or something like that? I think yeah. we need to do like a staff report back to city council. They don't have answers to these questions. And I think that's why they task our committee, okay. or any other questions they might have, but to task our committee with coming up with all these questions. Answers to those And questions. answers to those particular questions. Okay. Or we don't have an answer yet, but this is something that has to be considered. Here are the that questions we've created. That need to be that we feel need to be. And, and we need we need to do that. So is that something that we as a committee want to do? I think so. I think that's why the council gave that to us. And if we need to interact with my my view is if we need to interact with the budget committee, I that is fine. I see a potential to do that in meeting all this uh, personally. because so a lot of this is dependent upon the budget committee, and for us to be able to go back and, and report to the council say. It, void of budget questions is not going to help them. If we can interact with uh, maybe these questions that relate to budget, pass those on to the budget committee with some background and let them start working on 
on answers to those questions. And, and, and us then deal with the other questions, non-budget related, and, and let the budget committee feed, feed us, and then correlate some way a report that would go back to the city council. At least that, that's the way I, I So do we want to write up a report for the council? Do we want to make a presentation? And Not yet. Want? Not yet. That's what's the next step? What's the next step? Yeah, that, that, that's my point, I guess. Yeah, I've made right. a multiple choice question, right. but yeah, what is the next step? <laughs> but I, so but I, would, I, would, I would suggest that the next step is number one, provide a copy of these questions and our answers to these questions to the budget committee and, on a, and then schedule a meeting, a joint meeting with the budget committee okay. to, to go over these and to come up with a, a firm plan that we can then put up as a position paper that we pr provide to okay. the city council. That's my recommendation. So let me ask, Quick question here because if I could be a bit something, what questions did we actually answer? Not much. <laughs> We've got some from what Ben was right. saying and talking about. Some what ideas. What else did we get in trunks? You know, how, how, but not any particulars on, okay. Well, mm -hmm. the questions we couldn't answer were, were budget related. You know, for instance. Well, uh, well you know, even simply cost of cans. I mean, what, what are your cans going to cost you? Well, the you know, maintenance, the average lifespan span of these cans, how long are they going to last? Is so, and that's going to take that's going to take somebody. Oh, go ahead, sorry. That's going to take a lot of research. So somebody's going to have to spend some time researching all of this. A little bit, but I think yeah. other cities have well, I have think a lot of those answers. answers. So, um, do we want to do this in the form of a subcommittee? We're pretty small right now. Maybe we already are a subcommittee. Um, so, okay, I, I think that makes sense. Maybe create. Um, Here's the thing, Mark. You're expressing hesitancy over doing this, but let me just ask, if not this committee. If not us, who? who? Yeah, exactly. Because I can promise you no one on the council really has the time to yeah. do Well, and that's what I'm getting at. I think it's going to require us to do it. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. With this. So, hey, may, again, a suggestion for you to go through that and look at, okay, here's a question that's self-contained. Assign it to one of us. To, to research that, to go out and try to find whatever information we can about that. Us and those who aren't here, as, you, as well as go to that budget committee okay. with Mike and say, okay, here's, here's as I see it, budget related items. Can you, and he'd do the same thing. Uh, we, we don't profess to give them, an, a, just give them a, a broad assignment to get information, but let them manage that where there's budget figures involved. Okay and then report back. And that's maybe when we have some kind of a joint committee session. In the meantime, we can feed you what we're finding out from our research, from the, from the questions that, that, that are there. And they may, as we get into it, we may find other questions that come up that oh, I'm sure, we I'm sure thought about. I'm sure there will be, uh, yeah, so, I guarantee it. Uh, okay, and that's something, as a committee, we can look at, if that's what we want to do as a committee. Um, for me, for the next 30 days, I'm going to be in and out uh, quite a bit. I'm going back to Virginia, West Virginia here in a couple of weeks for a while. I'm going to visit my last living uncle before he goes and uh, taking my grandson to uh, school back east. So we're going to try and make that all one big trip. Yeah, see what else. And so on. And so, yeah, for the next 30 days at least, I'm pretty busy. I can do spend some time on it, but I cannot spend a lot. No, but if there's things that you can look at and say, here, I'll, I'll get this away. Okay, it's done. Yeah. And now, now Wayne's got to give you the whole thing. Wayne doesn't have anything else to do. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, Wayne's, hey, Wayne's got to keep me from problem. thinking about the lawsuits. <laughs> and then, uh, so I have two things. So, you know, speaking of schedules, in the next 60 days, I'm, I'm going into Gary, Indiana. I'm going into Chicago. I'm going into Mexico for a bit. Everything's, I, I'm, I'm on the road a lot. So, <laughs> oh, the one question, I know. <laughs> Gary, Indiana. No good detail. Chicago Gary, shall be. <laughs> Going punished. Um, one question I don't think we've addressed, I think that would be good for the, the budget committee to consider. Yeah. If it happens to be that we are able to recover our costs within a year or two years, whatever time frame we put on it, what is the disposition of the extra funds and where do they go? And if we're the ones who came up with the idea, should we get first dibs on extra monies should budget requests come in, such as the savings on the, you know, the oil that we talked about, that oil system? So one thing we haven't said is, 
the disposition of any excess funds should I be. I just don't think we're in a position to make that kind of request. Um, yeah, we'll go to the mayor and he'll make the call. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I think the, the, the well, point is he he it's the identified, it's anticipated that yes. $10,000 may come in next year, so and this is going to be an addition to the budget. And that's the only Council, way. this is something you're going to have this to do. This is the only we can do. It, right. it, is, oh. it is an enterprise revenue that can be transferred to different resources if need be. Uh, so uh, I think that's good. I tend to agree just off the top of my head that it's going to be five, ten years down the road before you think about something like that if we get that point. So. But I think to give the budget questions to Mike now, talk to him and let him know about our discussion a little bit. So. Give those to him and let him start to move forward with those with the signing so of the I budget can, committee members and start I can, gathering. I can, Forward these to Mike, and I also forward them to Chris if need be. Or you, uh, it would be good. If for one, I, uh, I don't know when he said they're having a meeting. If I'm in town, I can attend it, or one of us can attend that meeting. I don't know when well, schedule is. I think Ben would be a good one to attend. You go to that meeting. Yeah, somebody's more likely to have some of the answers okay. or more detail to some of those things than, than when we, with the research okay. that he's been doing, so forth on it. So. But we're all going to be busy. At least that'll yeah. get it out. And you know, some of this is going to be maybe research that somebody else is going to have to get on our behalf. I, I just got to say, so, since I retired, my time management skills. Are good. <laughs> 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 well, Mark, on the way here, what did I tell you? I said I can't stand these two-hour meetings. Let's keep this under an hour. If we're out of here in forty-five minutes, and here we are, an hour and a half, and we're. Yeah, I'll take the blame on that one. I tried to move it along. Talk to your wife about that. She'll help you out on that. <laughs> She'll, She'll help me out on that. She said, remember what you said about never getting involved again? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think between Corbett and I, we've got okay. a lot of this information. And if not, we at least know where to look. Right? State contract. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's so, a lot. And essentially, you know, by, by transferring this information, getting it uh, over to the committee with whatever answers we can have, I mean, that's going to be a lot of, these are some of the questions we've got. Let's add your questions to it, then let's start getting the answers to these questions. This is essentially, I think, what I'm hearing. Well, right. Ben, would it, would it take an inordinate amount of your time to do a, a bullet address to these questions? First pass. For us, I'd be happy to, to, to get a little better depth, yep. depth of understanding and idea yep. of some of these things that you've looked into already. I'm actually changing my personal schedule, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a leaf out of your book because that's a good idea. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna live in this this side conference room every Wednesday morning, so mm -hmm. I'll be able to tackle that. Not a problem. Want a second right. opinion? What's that? You want a second opinion? <laughs> No, don't. I don't want one from you anyway. <laughs> There's work that has to be done. I might as well get okay. it done. So, uh, so we know what we're doing. So I, I think so. Do we? Do we? Uh, since we don't have the other items that we're addressing, because we don't have the people here to address those items, are we moving towards? Should the we, you say you want to table the other items? Yes, because the, 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 the presentation, the presenter is not here. Yeah, that's true. Let me give you an update on storm drain. Can I? Okay. Yeah. So Ted and I are meeting in the morning. We're going to go over some uh, high-level expectations. BYU contacted us and wants to do uh, capstone projects. They need 19 capstone projects wow. for the students that they've got in place right now. Uh, Ted's, Ted's more than willing to direct that, and so he thinks we might could get a lot of the late work done on the storm drain studies stuff needed through through the capstone projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a little bit of guidance, they can give us information that's useful. If we just turn them loose, then then nothing. Yeah. yeah. If we just turn them loose, like what's been done in the past, and, and it's happened, we get something that you know. That's okay, yeah, that's interesting, but it doesn't do any good. And so Ted's hopeful that we can give them some direction. They've uh, Jones and Deville has applied for some. Uh, block uh, brick grants, building resilient infrastructure in communities, brick grants. Um, that's block, block that grants you mean? Brick. That's a brick. Building, building resilient infrastructure in communities. Learn something new every day. Okay. 
Anyways, so that we haven't heard yet on on the funding for the for the grant application that that Jones and Demille submitted on, on our behalf. Um, if this gets done, and Ted can steer what gets done and the way that they do it, then it would absolutely be useful once that that funding is approved. If it gets approved, so. Yeah, I there's just concern was that the last one was nice and gee whiz, but there wasn't a lot of value to us. But, right. but if Ted's willing to guide them, then I think right. it has value. And, and, and Ted knows what he wants from it okay. to, to make what he does and right. his company does um, more beneficial. So even though there's nothing, it's, it's I kind of work in that way. I'll just say for the past several meetings we've discussed stormwater. All I see now is I drive past all these communities. I don't see houses. I look at all the stormwater systems. What's, what's coming up there? And how's, it, how's, it, how's the drain taking place? And yeah, that's all, I, that's all I pay attention to anymore when I'm driving through town. It's a curse, isn't it? It is a curse. <laughs> there are several others who are doing the same thing you're doing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, what we need is another capstone project in town. We already got one with uh, Utah State, right? Oh, one you you know, you, you get a sense of competition between them. What are they doing? Hey, they, they're they're looking at uh, the upper drainage areas, not the whole project. Trying to see if they can come up with some um, near-term solutions to our current drainage problems, like on Broad Hollow and everything. Mine was driving that. That's why I was hoping Utah, Utah State, State is doing that. Utah State is doing that. Yes. Oh, I spaced that somewhere along. Yeah. It was in your, your email. Yeah. So it, we, yeah, well, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, my name was in the presentation. Yeah, it was in the email for some too. And just they come down and drill, drill around. Just an FYI, there may be a, a need for a sewer study. Um, we got a, the guy that's building the house over here on Oak. About sewer? The guy that's building the house over here on Oak that, that delivered all the ICF foam, the foam blocks, the ICF. So across from you, Mark. Yeah. I, the super Walmart is going across from me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you calling that a home or a uh, <laughs> complex? Hey, let's just go with a complex. <laughs> campus. He's going to be campus. Um, he has, has expressed a willingness to fund, as long as he can afford it. Obviously, he's expressed a willingness to fund public sewer as long as it's in place and ready to use before he's ready to occupy it. Yeah, they ain't going to have it. I'm gonna call that one right out. Like the burger. What? Oh yeah, you'll hold it. You'll hold it. All you gotta do is pipe down there. No, he's betting you that it will be done. You're betting that it will. Carol Bell. I talked to Carol Bell yesterday. She's a property owner that owns the property on Valley View, where they put in the curb, the rock ditch right in there. She's willing to participate to the tune of a quarter of a million bucks, as long as she can pay for it when she sells her properties. Now that's a pretty big contingency. Um, two of the other property owners that are ready, that are ready, getting ready to build, or have already issued a permit, um, are willing to fund what they would have spent. I've already got enough money to do it. With those kind of commitments, which aren't really much of a commitment, we've already got enough money to do it. I talked to a contractor that's willing to help participate in a, uh, what do we call it, a general manager, gen or a, uh, GCGM? General, what did we do with Bancom? What did we call that process? Where they, as a contractor, they were the consultant. General engineering. General, general, general contractor yeah. construction management. Yeah, it's basically a design build is what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. And, and our rough estimates are 350. And, and we That's for the study? No, that's for everything. That's installed and everything. Yeah. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm, just, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> you say so. Um, <laughs> Janet and Janet Lunt and Sherry Berger are are have already expressed a willingness to beat the bushes for easements, um, and so it it could happen. And we're looking at how many impact fees that would have to be connected to wherever they're going, and who's going to have to pay those impact fees? Well, the only people that pay an impact fee are the ones that connect. And that impact fee goes to Yeah, under state law, if you put that sewer system there, everybody's going to be forced to connect. If you're within 300 feet. No, only I thought we went over this before where they... That's where state law. No. Yeah. No. I'll, I'll show you. Okay. 
I your <laughs> We're good. I have a root beer. <laughs> you, get, you have a root beer on your side. We're going to eliminate the root part of Belmont. Okay. <laughs> that would be interesting. It's really a reasonable distance, is what it boils down to. Because Thousand Oaks wasn't done that way. And those people all have an option whether they were <coughs> signed into the source system. That, that requirement is governed by the city. The state doesn't regulate, the health department doesn't regulate, the county doesn't regulate. They put that requirement totally on the city. I heard that we, we discussed this last time because I was I was concerned that I don't want to, my, my system works just fine. I don't want to pay another 55, 60 bucks a month for something to, that I don't have to no, pay. I'm measure 40,000 to get to it. <laughs> So if you go up to if you go up to his house that you know if that, that nice location where he's off to do stop there. Don't go all the way down to my house. Well, anyway, well, it's, it's, here's a concern in Colbert and I talked about this that the time may come when this when the county, state or county, may require us to go off of septic no. and to fund fund a sewer system and if and it's that, a contamination of other groundwater that that happens. As soon as you hit saturation, is what they call it. As soon as you hit saturation, and the soil no longer takes the crap out of the crap, as soon as the soil no longer takes it and filters it to the point where it doesn't contaminate someone else's water, the state doesn't, all the state does is regulates FEMA requirements. All the state does is manage it. FEMA steps in and says, you're done flushing toilets. In the meantime, you're going to treat everybody's water that you've affected, and you're going to you're going to provide a plan when you're going to have public sewer to every connection. So, when could that happen? But look at the water. Look at the sewer system across or next door to you. What did they spend on that to put in a private treatment facility? I, a lot, I'm sure. I don't know how much they spent. The guy across the street, he's over sixty grand. Yeah, I I, th I talked to him trying to get his septic approved, and he. he was able to do it without going mechanical, but he did, yeah. But finally, yeah. I mean, it took him forever. His his percolation rate was two weeks. Okay, so he's going to be so, filled. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's mandatory deep trench, long deep trench. And the only reason they do that is because deep trench gives you head. It gives you pressure of that, effluent, or pushing that water into the ground. Just, but anyways, all, all I'm saying is, it's going to happen one of these days. When is that going to happen? So Who if knows? we can get people on. If you kick that can, the more people you can get on it. Well, and if these guys are willing right now. I mean, I grew up on septic. I love septic. I wouldn't have anything I've been on septic for 25 years. So about 20 but, or 27. But there's some that don't want to. And it depends. It's totally dependent on the soil in, in, in where you're building and if you can't make it work, then what do you do? You spend 60 grand on a system, and, and, and if somebody's willing to, to throw it in, all it does is it kicks the can further down the road for everybody that's still, that is still on section. So it, it benefits the entire city. You can't quantify that. You can't quantify that benefit to the point where you can assess a value to, to anybody over it. But if you've got people that are willing to do it and people that want to connect, Right now, there is no requirement to connect. That's up to the city council. If the city council wants to make it a requirement, if you're within 300 feet or 500 feet, um, almost every city is different on, on that requirement because it's regulated by the city. Red Robin too, with me. What now? He said Red Robin. Red Robin. <laughs> yeah, we don't know this. <laughs> but any, anyways, um, it, it, it could happen. I mean, there's enough people right now that want it, that are willing to pony up the money. Um, we just got to figure out how to make it work and, and create a cooperative with those that are willing to fund it to, to get it installed. Okay, are we going to include that under other items? Uh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other items. And it's, more, it's more just an FYI yeah. because I mean, I, I hope that it's done, that the, that the research is done through, at least some of it is done through Capstone. The thing, the thing that really excites me about it is that if, if you install sewer up that gully, now, now you've got a road or a trail, call it what you want, but that trail also facilitates 
Fuel load reduction for fire department. It, it facilitates access to a fire from underneath if the fire is in that gully. And it's likely that's where it would happen, one, where one would happen that you can't defend right now. But by the, by the time you facilitate fuel load reduction by being able to get equipment and man and, and manpower down in there with a chipper, you can you can benefit the entire city by being able to access that. Now so you've also, since you've got a dirt road down through there, you can also facilitate storm drain retention basins. So the top, I mean, the way that we've talked about it, we wouldn't, you got the gully, you wouldn't run right at the bottom, the flow line of that gully with sewer. You'd get it up on, this, up on one side or the other so that you're out of the flow line. Now you put a couple of berms across that gully every 100 feet, 500 feet, 1,000 feet. Now you've got storm drain retention. But by having that dirt road go up through there, now you've got access. You've got access to build them. You've got access to maintain them. Um, it, to me, it's just a win-win all the way around. So I think that that means people. People are apt to create fires. It's but like that genius who tried to kill but that's what, but that's what you're, as, as I said, Or you could be a genius trying to kill a spider with a blowtorch. Right. But that's what your residents want. Is your yeah, residents want the ready. trails. Yeah, understandable. I mean, when, when they started doing this for trails, I, I just kind of jumped on the bandwagon and said, hey, if you're going to do trails, then let me throw a sewer line in that dirt road. Right. And so, the trails will put people on there with eyes and what's going so on. So it goes, it goes both ways. Absolutely, yeah. it goes both ways. The only thing I would request, and I know this is never going to happen because civil engineers do it differently than mechanical engineers. I like to have my road surfaces smooth. I don't like having 30 or 40 little pop-ups with the, uh, like in fact, on there on Oak Drive, if you look there above where we're walking, you see a, a good inch and a half drop where they where they have the uh, the little uh, water lines and the, you know, the, the cutout and the, the valve, the valves and stuff like that. So up by my house, I've got four or five valves right in front of my driveway. Well, the plow's not going to get down there, so it's just going to become an icy mess for me. I would and then it gets that. worse because it freezes and because there's no water. Right. And then it thaws. And it's and I would prefer but a smooth road with no, with no, you know, uh, okay. mammals in there. But anyway. all the stuff and all the new ones, the ones that are terrible, are the ones we did. No the, ones, <laughs> the ones that were done right were the ones that VanCon did. I mean, we did a few of them right, but for the most part, the ones that are terrible are the ones that were done in-house. And that was flunkies that didn't know what they were doing that added water to the Concrete Mix. because it made it easier to finish, but it also made it easier. So a six to inch slump became a six inch slump became a ten inch slump, or twelve. Twelve. Add water it makes it easier to work it. Those are garbage truck drivers. Thank you. Well, I was going to say that. I hope we're not counting on using <laughs> summer help to be garbage truck. <laughs> same same guys. Okay. Uh, I, I I do have heartburn with Falcon because they pulled their dump Van truck Con. in. Yeah, Vancon because they pulled their dump truck into my driveway on a hot day and let it sit there. And sit there, and now I have four tire marks that have gone into my asphalt. And they parked right on a, right on the scene, so I have a break in the scene. Sorry, I wish I'd known. Yeah. Anyway, I went out there and I told them, "Move your truck." Next day, they parked back there again. Like, this is my driveway. This is not a city road. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If there are no other items. I make a motion to. I uh, just need. Well, I got one more. For oh. <laughs> um, the next meeting date. Uh, as so needed. as we move forward. As needed. Uh, we can do as needed. That's what I want to do. Uh, technically, I think we're supposed to have at least one meeting a quarter, as a committee. So we can uh, we can schedule October fourth, or as needed, if, or not. If we get some information that we can bring back and discuss, or we can hold off till November, or we just say next as needed. I don't know if it's October. Let's go ahead and schedule it then. Well, I'll go ahead and schedule it after the meeting. Okay. Sounds good to me. That's well, I, I, I agree with that. If we don't keep this moving, we're not going to have the information in a year. All right. We're not going to have enough information in a year to be able to make a decision. I would actually go to a different direction. I'd say let's push it November 4th because October 4th is, 4th is still outdoor work. This is prime outdoor work time. November 4th is a little colder and not, much, not as much gets done. So, um, I will entertain a moment for adjournment. A motion for adjournment, excuse me. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. 
You need to second it. Okay. Motion made by Wayne and Dave to adjourn at 7. I'm going to call it 7. I will 755. Let's figure 7. Yeah, we okay. all my complaining to you, Mark. We made absolutely no impact. Can you stop that for me? So, Thank you. Anyway. Oh, send that over. You'll send yeah. that over? Or you may have.